Hey guys, Jess here. I am back with another 20 minute motivator for you. And tonight I am tackling uh, enamel dots. So I have struggled with organization of my enamel uh, dots, stickers, stars, hearts, like the little enamel flare pieces or little sprinkly bits that you put on a layout. Um, I've had them in a binder system. I have them just piled and uh, neither of those really worked well for me. I'm just not thrilled with it. I've had them in a drawer. Um, so I had a lovely subscriber um, give me an idea on how t how she organizes them. Uh, so we're going to give that a whirl tonight and see if it works. Um, I'm totally game and it's been uh, one of those supplies that have been bugging me for a little while. So I hope you'll come join me. Grab a project you want to work on as well or maybe just listen to me in the background and uh, let's accomplish something together in the next 20 minutes. So we're going to go ahead and get started. See you on the other side. All right. Hey guys, here is what I'm working with tonight. All of my enamel dots, and we're gonna get these organized. And um, so uh, the idea is to take a bin um, and cut cardstock and adhere the plastic sheets that your enamel dots come to to the cardstock and you put them in the bin and you can kind of thumb through them and look through them like a Rolodex. I love the idea because I, I use these bins um, for a lot of my ephemera already so and I also like um, flipping through uh, product I don't mind that uh, I was using the album or the binder system previously for these it's just um I don't know it's okay for stickers it's okay for alphas because I'm more or less just like I don't know. The way I look for those is different. When it comes to like enamel shapes, like they're just little sprinkly bits and I want to be able to find and use. I can't explain the difference, but it just, it wasn't working for me when it came to enamel. So um, I decided to um, try out this method to see if it would work better. So I'm going to set the timer and we're going to do 20 minutes here and I have, uh, haven't prepped anything for this. So let's uh 20 minutes on the clock. And here we go. All right. So I need to get some well, I do have some other pieces that don't belong in here. <laughs> so we should probably get these out. This is kind of like my catch-all um it's embellishment. My catch-all bin kind of when I if I get new product or whatnot, I just kind of toss it in here until I actually put it away. I think everything else, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna put these over here and I'm just gonna toss these in here for now until I got my cardstock. So I am using a fridge bin. This is gonna go on top of my um, embellishment cart, my embellishment buffet as I like to call it. It's a bino fridge bin, it's six and a quarter, uh, wide by 12 and a half long. Uh, I get these on Amazon. You get like two for, I don't remember how much they are, but I find them handy. They fit nicely. And I, and I like, I just like them for my embellishment. So that's what I'm going to be storing my enamel dots in. So I need some cardstock. And we're gonna cut some stuff up. And normally I would use printer cardstock for this project, but I am all out and I forgot to buy some. And I'm kind of impatient and I really don't want to wait until it comes in. <laughs> so we're just gonna go ahead and use some of my regular cardstock. Um, so we're gonna cut these to be about five. Uh, I measured the bottom here from here to here and it's about five and a half. So, um, the six and a quarter, it must fan out a little bit at the top. So I'm going to make them make one five and a half, make sure that fits okay. Cause, or five and a quarter, excuse me. Uh, just to give it a little room on either side. So I'm thinking maybe we can just make them, um, let's make them square. See how that works. All right. 
beautiful. So they're just gonna sit in here like this, and you can label them if you want, but I'm not, I'm not gonna bother with labeling them. Um, it's literally just like the sprinkly bits, the little pieces, so. But it's nice to like thumb through. I think I'm really gonna like this system, so I'm very excited. So I need to cut out a bunch of these. So I'm doing five and a quarter by five and a quarter. So how are you all doing? And um, how, you know, you know, how's the new year treating you? We are in the new year now. Um, and it's kind of crazy, but we've all survived. And here we are. So how are you all doing? And what are your goals for 2021? Um, do you have some crafty goals, some scrappy goals, some organization goals? Um, I try to be kind of fluid with my goals. I don't make, you know, I like to make them achievable because then I feel successful. I mentioned that before. So, um, you know, I do have a couple of projects, you know, like my mom journal that I want to get back into. I've kind of neglected scrapping that for some time and I really want to get back and do that. So I've kind of tried to commit to doing that at least once a month. I gotta catch up on my monthly project life spreads. Um, I've also I've been so into doing the 12 by 12s lately. I haven't done much else for sizes. So and I kind of want to um, see if I can complete some albums. I'm not sure if that's even a possibility because you know I really don't scrap chron chronologically. So I don't. That just stresses me out. Like I feel like I have to keep on top of it. Um, like I just did December daily and it was really, really fun. Um, and I kept up with that project for the month. Well, I call it remember December, but everybody knows it by December daily. Um, I kept up with that project pretty good throughout the month of December. I only have a few more layouts to do and it was really fun for that month, but to do, uh, my, my scrapping that way 24 seven, like all the time, there's just no way I couldn't, I, I just can't do it. It would stress me out. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but I'm going to see, I've got a few albums that are close to being like really full. So I might just call them, call them completed and, uh, start a new one. So those are kind of like my pretty general goals that I've set out for myself. Um, so I'd love to hear yours. And I, you know, in each month I try to, you know, challenge myself with something small or, you know, more achievable. You know, whether it's like using up supplies or, or trying a new technique, you know. So I do try and um, do mini goals throughout the year. And I feel like if doing it that way, I feel accomplished. I'm one of those people, I kind of like immediate gratification. Like I like, I like to see the end result. I'm not very patient either. So, um, when I start something, I like to finish it. Um, and if I make goals that are like, you know, I'm going to do, you know, X amount of layouts in this amount of time, I will stress myself out until I get it done. And, and I don't want to do that. Like scrapbooking is very therapeutic to me. So I don't want to add pressure to it if that makes any sense so I try to stay stay away from like I'm going to complete, complete x amount by this time and more or less just say I'm going to try to do more of you know blank or you know I'm going to take this entire month and see how much of this product I can use um and I don't I don't know it just it's a mental game I think but it um works well for me and I and I still find it fun and therapeutic and relaxing and I still enjoy it um, and it doesn't stress me out so do you have any tricks like that that you use to like kind of like be productive but almost like trick yourself into like you know getting stuff done <laughs> what's the, what's your tricks um, that you do I'm just curious all right we've got some of these started now all right, so I'm thinking I'm going to need to use double-sided tape. I don't know if my ATG is going to be strong enough here. So 
let's see how this is going to work. And I just realized that some of these are longer, but that's okay. All right, we should probably kind of take some inventory of what we got, right? Not be a bad idea. I have a ton of miscellaneous. Not really sure how we're going to handle those, but we'll figure it out. These little tiny hearts, these will all work. Lots of hearts. I love the enamel hearts. Can never have too many of those. And the doodle bug sprinkles are are awesome. Like my favorite. They're like the perfect size. I got these cute little cameras too. Aren't those adorable? All right, we're just taking stock here, trying to figure out what we've got going on, so I can kind of plan how I'm going to stick these down. Hmm. So maybe it will just be that, I wonder if I should have made them a little taller. Oh well. They're cut now, so we're going to leave it. But maybe I can do, I don't know, we'll see. Well, we'll just keep them full on the top and then just do another one, I guess. I kind of feel bad doing that, but I don't want to, hmm, kind of like a jigsaw puzzle, isn't it? <laughs> I could add it to the back and then flip it around when I've, you know, if I need more sizes or shapes. I don't know, that's a tough decision. Didn't really take a lot of stock into size, but I kind of feel like, I just like it being at the top. Well, but I like, oh my goodness, Jessica, make a decision. Isn't this ridiculous? <laughs> All right, so we're just going to put this one in the middle. I'm going to call it that, and we're going to live with it. So I think I'm just going to do one strip and see how that works. Right, hopefully that will be enough and it won't like flop all over the place. I think that's probably the one risk to this method is if you have some that don't stick very well, they might pop off, but you know, that's okay. Yeah, one strip works good. And then so the other question of this method is like, how do you organize them? So these are multicolored, right? So I'll probably have them in the back and then I'll organize the rest of them by shape and then by color. Because generally speaking, when I use these uh, little sprinkly bits, I'm often looking for the, a color, specifically a color or a shape or both. So organizing them that way makes sense, right? Okay, we got a few more packages here. I think I'm going to do um, the shapes like this as well. So I've got those gem pieces in here. Got some more hearts. Lots more hearts. <laughs> okay. And some glitter. All right. I don't know where many of these come from. I've got so many. More hearts, more hearts. Okay. So these are some random, well we got red. These are some random. These match. These are all by themselves. Okay, so let's start with these little guys here. So I'm going to get them all on the paper and then I will organize them by color. So yeah, I just, I don't know, for some reason the binder system just wasn't working for me for these. I've had them in a drawer and that was okay, but again, I just didn't I wasn't thrilled with it. Um, so I was so thankful that a subscriber came up with this idea. I was thrilled. I was like, oh, let's give it a whirl. It's not going to hurt anything. I take them out of these plastic sleeves anyway, right? So 
that's what organizing organization is. It's all about trial and error. And then until you find that one system that works well for you. And everybody is unique. Everybody has their own, you know, way of doing things. So it's not a one size fits all method. Alright. I really love how these look though. And it and a great easy way to take stock of what you have for inventory, right? And actually, as I look at this, I'm like, I could do little tags on top um, to identify the colors, like where the colors begin and end. Ooh, that'd be cute. There we go. Those fit perfectly. Look at that. Isn't that so pleasing to the eye? Alright, keep going with the hearts here. So I might stick some of the random ones on together just so we don't, I feel kind of bad wasting space on some of these cards. Oops, getting ahead of myself. So how was your holidays and your Christmas and your New Year's. I hope it was all good. I hope you stayed safe and enjoyed the quiet time. Maybe some, hopefully some long weekends and vacation time if you work. Ours was nice. It was pretty low key. Um, we, uh, it's the first Christmas we've actually been able to stay at home. So kind of a silver lining there I guess for us you know I can't do it I'm just gonna leave these on their own sheet oh no now they're all gonna pop off well I'll just leave these here they're not gonna be centered I can't mix the colors my my OCD is kicking in. I just can't. And I honestly don't know if I can handle it. These being off center too. It's not ridiculous. I am just unreal. Okay. That paper is a little bit destroyed. But we can salvage it I think. So the kids really enjoyed like being home in their jammies all day. And so did we. You know we missed seeing family. And we did a lot of Zoom and FaceTime which was nice sugar. That was very smart. So it was definitely different, but it was still, we still enjoyed it. So, and the most important thing is everybody stayed home safe and healthy. So I don't know if I can salvage that one. So you're going to let it go. And so now we have a brand new year with brand new opportunity and Hopefully we'll return to some sort of normalcy by mid-year. That would be really nice. We're starting to, we're thinking we might try and go camping this year if everything works out. We didn't go camping last year just because of COVID and, um, you know, but we're, we're going to reserve our sites and hope that we can go this year because we really missed our camping. Um, we go three or four times a year. It's really fun. Although I have some friends that go on, um, they, they go and stay at, I'm going to say this word wrong, yurts, I think it is, um, which are these little, like, fabric-y type circular cabin things in the woods. Um, we usually just tent, um. And uh, it looks really fun. And I'm so, I had to tell my husband, I'm like, I really want to try that this year. Uh, go say, it's not quite a hotel, but it's a little bit, um, a little bit nicer than tenting. And it's like, kind of like an in-between a tent and a camper, I guess. I don't know. But it looks really fun. It's out in the woods. There's, it's like near like a bunch of trails and all that sort of stuff so I don't know it looks really fun so I think we might you know play it by ear but if everything 
goes well maybe we'll try that this year that it just seems really fun to me something different different scenery we do like going to our regular camping spots but um i'm always up for something new every now and again so maybe we'll try that okay i think we're kind of figuring this out a little bit this is such a great idea <laughs> well for now let's see i just love it I'm just going to stick these guys right on, right, fit them right in here somewhere. The double sided tape is working out really well too. I just don't know if the, I mean the ATG might have been fine, but I don't know. It's just easier to use the double sided tape, I guess, for me. So yeah, we might do some new camping adventures. But, uh, we're not sure. I've got some house projects lined up and, you know, I have some of those every year. Some painting and all that fun sort of stuff. Starting to plan for those. Looking forward to the warm weather coming back. I'm not a big fan of winter, so I'm always looking forward to... I like it for Christmas, don't get me wrong. Like, winter can stay for the month of December. And then after the new year, I'm okay if it melts and it becomes 70 and stays 70 year round. That's just, that's my preference, but it's not reality. <laughs> so I, you know, make the best I can out of winter. We did get the kids um, a snow tube, like a nice yellow bean snow tube for Christmas. So I am hoping actually we get some snow so that we can actually take them out and test it out. We, we gave it a little, there was a little bit of snow on the ground and so we blew it up. My husband gave it a little bit of a test run like down the driveway and it, it, it worked actually pretty good. <laughs> so, oh goodness, 20 minutes is up already and we still have some time to go. So I'm going to keep going. Um, you guys can hang out with me or if, you know, you wrapped up your project and you want to do something else. I totally get it, but your 20 minutes is up. Hopefully you've accomplished something productive. But I'm gonna keep going. Um, yeah, so we, we gave it a little test run in the driveway and it worked really well. So I'm kind of excited about <laughs> the um, going tubing. I think it'll be fun. So the climbing up the hill, not so much, but we're gonna start out with some small hills. We do have some hills in our yard too that we can try out, so. Um, but we kind of need some snow to do it. And we actually got rain recently, and so all the snow is gone. Um, so we got to wait for some more to come our way before we can try out the, the tube. But I think that'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it. One of those few winter things that I do. I don't ice skate. I don't ski. Um, I've been snowmobiling once, and it was really fun, but I wouldn't do it again. I prefer to be a passenger instead of a driver. Um, that was just, that's just my preference, but it was still a really good time. Um, I don't snowboard. Yeah, I don't do any of that. So winter's kind of, I'm kind of boring in winter. <laughs> so give me some summertime and I'm outside all the time. Ocean and yard work and short hikes and camping. It's just definitely, my, and I, I prefer you know, spring and fall out of all the seasons, but um, winter is my least favorite for sure. All right. So I can't wait to see all the new collections that are reveals that are going to be coming out soon in part with the new year. I always look forward to that. Not really like I need anything, but you know, it's still exciting to see what they've come out with and what you, you're going to want to buy. So I always look forward to that. I'm going to be making some DIY kits though coming soon. So I'm thinking I'm going to put together a video for that as well because I've got lots of random product that I really need to... I really, I, I really need to, but I want to use. And I always find it the best way to use stuff like that. I mean, I do create layouts and I'll pull things from here and there, so don't get me wrong, but um, 
when I make a DIY kit, I like fly through the product really. Um, I use it up way faster than doing it random bits here and there. So I think I might put together a couple kits to use throughout the year. Try to use up some of the product. So I think that'll be fun. And uh, oh, one other goal, one other scrappy goal I have too is um, to use more cut files. So I finally got my silhouette behaving again. It took me a while. <laughs> but I found some great YouTube videos on uh, maintenance and cleaning. And yes, I'm guilty. I did I, I didn't realize that I should have been doing some more cleaning than I was. Um, so I, I found a couple of tutorials on YouTube that walked you through like you know how to clean and maintain and oil and grease where you should on the silhouette. And then I got a new blade. I had some of the auto blades that came with my machine and I gave them a whirl and I just they just they weren't working for me and I it, it could have been user error I'm very well could have been user error but um, I had such a hard time with them so I um, I just went and got a regular manual blade I guess it's called I think it's called manual blade I don't know, manual blade um, and put that in the machine and that worked a lot better a lot lot better so so this guy's just a smidge too tall. Well, trim the plastic a little bit. I'm just going to leave it as is. Um, so now my silhouette is behaving again for the time being. And so I'm like, I really need to do some use some more cut files. I love cut files. I just, I got so frustrated with my machine that I just kind of gave up on them. So that's another one of my small little mini goals is just do more cut files, use more cut files. So I'm going to try to do that. And play more of my foil quill, too. Um, I got that, and I've dabbled with it a little bit, and it is super fun. Um, it, there's a lot of great things you can do with it as well. So I'm looking forward to seeing what else I can accomplish, or what else I can do with the foil quill. Alright, I got lots of random sparkly embellishments in here that I think kind of match these. Let's see how many we can fit on here. So I might have to do two sheets. Oh, I need to cut some more paper too. So yeah, the foil quill is really fun. I know there's, I've got just the basics down, so I'm sure there's a lot more that I could do. So I want to learn more about that machine, play around with that a little bit more. And of course I have a ton of mixed media that I really need to use. I use it bits and pieces here or there, but I have such a collection of it and I need to use it more. So that's another thing on the, in the back of my mind of like little mini goals. And so I usually often like do challenges or find um, or scrapped with layouts that kind of force me to to do those kind of things if that makes any sense so that way I'll use those products and my sewing machine that's another thing <laughs> I have my sewing machine I finally actually I rearranged my desk so I have my sewing machine actually out on my desk now so I'm hoping that will encourage me to use it more um, I've only done a couple of stitching things, stitching things, so I'm hoping to practice that a little bit more because I love the look. I really do. Um, I just just never took the time to do it. So I get I don't know. I think it, part of it's like laziness. Oh, I gotta haul it out. Oh, I gotta turn it on, and I gotta put it in. You know, all the prep work. But that's not an excuse. I just need to do it. <laughs> oh. So what are your products that you're going to try and use more this year? Um, what are you going to take out? And I find when I take it out and put it near my desk, it helps remind me to use it. So I'd love to hear what yours are. Um, 
and you know I'd also like to know if I'm alone or not <laughs> I don't think I am but you never know right all right we gotta cut up some more paper here this is going really well though can't rip it what a brilliant idea thank you Jess for sharing it What's another product that you struggle with organizing, that you've changed methods a couple of times and you still can't, you just can't find the right organization method? I, I've got everything for myself pretty well, pretty well organized now. Um, there's not much left outstanding that I can think of. I'm trying to think. You know, I have, I really like my paper system, I like my embellishment system, I made my mixed media, my project life is finally in a good spot. Yeah, I think, I mean the only thing that I struggle with is when I buy those dimensional stickers, you know, like the 3D ones, and I don't buy many of them, but I do buy them. You know, oftentimes they're made by like Paper House or you get them at Michael's and stuff. Um, I buy them because I like them and I, there's like bits and pieces of those collections or the whole thing that I'll use. Like I got a really cute school ones for like, I'm thinking about when I scrap Wyatt's school pictures or events or whatnot. Like they had a couple of cute things in there that I would add. More probably on a project life. But uh, that could also happen on a regular layout. So those are a bit more bulky, and I originally have, I mean, right now I have the few that I, well, I have most of them in my binder system, but they're really bulky, and I'm not loving it. I'm not loving them in there, but it's kind of working. So... I feel like those I might just have to go to a bin system as well just because they're just so bulky and so you can't really fit many in the the binders so I don't know just something that that's another item that I'm I'm not really thrilled with my current system so but I'd be love to hear what yours are and what your challenges are or what you're gonna try and use up more or organize differently what your goals are overall all right we're making good progress here we're able to get all these gold ones together I think and I had a nice little hiatus from videos so YouTube I took a break over the holidays so I'm happy to have the 20 minute motivator series back in flight, but it was a nice little break. I spent a lot of time with my family, so, which was good. Getting stuff around the house done and just relaxing. Um, so that was really nice, but I did miss you all and I'm glad to be back. <laughs> this is like a part of my life now, you know, you're all my friends and uh, I like chatting with you. So it kind of felt strange not doing it. I did, you know, maintain a presence on social media. But, um, yeah, I kind of miss doing the 20 minute motivators and the, you know, the Friday night lives. So I'm really looking forward to getting back into all of that. I hope you guys are too. But it was good to take a break, good to reset. But I've got some good ideas and some content coming down the pipe that I think a lot of you will enjoy. So I'm really excited. It's going to be a good year. It's going to be a good year. That's what I keep telling Full of fun new things. We are looking good. I still have quite a few though. Holy moly. I have a lot of enamel dots. And see I wasn't even... I had them... I had some of them in the binder, but then I got lazy and just put them all in the fridge bin. And so they were in a couple of different places, and I wasn't 
look, you know, using them like I should. So I'm, I'm really hoping this will help me be able to find them quick and easy. And I really have to use up these glitter ones. I don't know. I struggle with using glitter. How about you? Glitter is one of those tricky color, well, colors or styles or I don't know what you want to call it. I don't really gravitate towards glitter. I kind of avoid it. But I've got all these um, glitter enamels from kits over the past year, so, you know, I should use them, but I don't use glitter very often. Um, glitter fonts, like glitter paper, like, I don't use any of it, really. Um, or it's not, th it's not that I, I don't, I don't reach for it, like, I don't seek it out and be like, oh my gosh, I have to have this glittery thing. Like, you guys know me, I love my thickers, like, I have a ton of thickers and I love them, but, um... I have glitter thickers that I bought because I just had to have them because they were thickers, right? And I don't use them. I think I used maybe one or two in one of my stepdaughter's layouts or maybe even a gifted layout. And that's it. And they just kind of sit there and I'm like, I gotta stop buying glitter because I just don't use it. You know, it's just one of those things. It's really pretty, but I just don't, I just don't use it. So do you have like a product style kind of like that, that you just don't use? I know for like ephemera, some people have said, you know, I don't like floral or I don't like butterflies, which I, I'm like, I can't even believe it. I'm like, how do you not love floral and butterflies? But you know what? Everybody's different. <laughs> so, you know, no judgment here. Um, but I love to hear what product you're just like, yeah, I never buy this because I just, I don't. So these I'm just going to get, I don't know if I'll ever use these. You know, not really my style. Um, we got gems here. We got a few more enamels. I think I'll get rid of those too. Alright, a few more glittery bits here. We got some random dots and stars. Okay, we're getting there folks. We're getting there. I am pretty excited though. I have, I finally ordered myself. So my husband, the wonderful man he is, got me the PictureMate um, PM400 photo printer for Christmas and I love it. I used to have the Canon selfie and don't get me wrong, I absolutely loved my selfie. I really did. Um, However, uh, now that I, I wanted the, to be able to do the larger size, so that's why I asked for the picture me, because the Canon only does 4x6. And now that I have the, the Epson, the quality is just like out of this world. Just out of this world. Um, so I've been loving the 5x7 size. And so... And I was, when I was just doing the Re Remember December layouts, I watched some, uh, I watched a lot of Allie Edwards because I think she's just so talented and her layouts are just, were just so stunning. And um, she would do these large format prints in her albums, like six by eight or, um, I watched some of her Project Life too and so like her eight by 10 um, spreads and she'd just do these large photos. I'm like, oh my gosh, I really want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I ordered myself uh, a large format print photo printer now. Um, it's the Epson 15,000. And I am so excited because it should be here soon and I just cannot wait like to print. I've always wanted to do like a super, what did I do this for? A super large, um, let's see if there's colors in here, a super large like photo and then like embellish on top of it I don't know I've just always had the desire to do that and so I'm kind of excited that I'm gonna have the opportunity because the printer's 
gonna be here. I'm just like so thrilled. So super, super excited about that. I'm just gonna add these on here too. They're a different color, but they're gems. Um, so yeah, I spoiled myself, but um, I'm gonna use it. And I told my husband that. He's like, whatever, he's like, whatever makes you happy. He's such a good guy. <laughs> but um, I'm so excited. It prints up to, hold on one second. Yeah, so it prints up to 13, or sorry, up. Uh, yeah, 13 by 19, I think it is. So I can do like a 12 by 12 print. And I read the reviews and it's also the same printer that Allie Edwards has. And so the quality is just incredible. I am like so excited to be able to like play on Photoshop and do some journaling, like right on the photos before I print them. Like the possibilities are gonna be endless. So I am like so excited to play with that stuff that printer when it comes so I had I did some rearranging and I have a spot for it already and I'm like oh I'm, I'm like a kid waiting for Christmas <laughs> I'm like so excited but it's in they were actually um out of stock for like a really long time it was crazy like printers in general like are really hard to find and uh I did not buy mine off Amazon they were so overpriced on Amazon it was outrageous absolutely outrageous I couldn't believe it so I actually ordered mine through Staples um, they were the same price as uh, all the other places all the other online shops but the other online shops actually um, were out they were sold out so um, but Staples had had one so I ordered it from there and so I'm so excited so so excited so that's going to be my new toy that I have coming. Cannot wait. And honestly, like I wouldn't have known difference in quality. Uh, like I, I was, like I said, I was totally happy with my Canon selfie. Um, I'm just putting all of these, they're all kind of neutral. So I'm just putting them all on the same sheet, but yeah, so, um, I'll have to order some, large format photo printer paper but um yeah I'm like really excited to play so excited and it's another it's an it's another Epson so um uh, the like I said uh, watching Ali Edwards the quality seems like phenomenal so I'm really looking forward to seeing the quality um on this printer and if it's as good as or better than my PM 400 oh my god I'm gonna like, I don't even know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna lose my mind because I'm just gonna have, the photos are just gonna be so beautiful. Cause I take all my pictures uh, from my, that's the one thing I'm concerned about, I, from my iPhone. So they should hopefully blow up or, you know, I should be able to make them larger. I haven't had an issue making them five by seven. So are any of you um, do large prints off your, your iPhone photos? Have you had an issue? I mean, my understanding is that the re resolution is high, but um, not sure if it's, you know, if there's, excuse me, if there's limitations as to what you can, what size you can print. So, hmm, something to consider. I'm sure it will be fine, but I do take most of my photos off my iPhone. I don't actually, I take them all now because I did have a DSLR. But I never grabbed it. I never. I was always had my phone on me, um, and I never used my my DSLR camera. So I finally sold it because I'm like, you know, I'll I'll sell it to somebody who will actually get use out of it and appreciate it. Because mine just it was just sitting collecting dust with me. Because the iPhone was just the I was I was satisfied with the with the quality and the convenience was so nice so um and I haven't turned back since then um so hopefully I'll be able to print large photos no problem but we'll figure that out if I need to well we'll figure it out one way or another 
I can't imagine it's not like I can't print like an 8x10 or 12x12. I'm sure that will be fine. But if you have any experience with it, I'd love to hear from you. Oh, why not open these? I still have others. So I have black and white. Let me put these on one. We're almost there. Well, we're almost there. <laughs> All right. I got some black and white I need to do. So I've got quite a bit of the bin filled, but not nearly. I mean, that bin's got a lot of room. So not to say I'm going to buy more enamel dots, but if I got more enamel dots, I usually get them all in kits. So I'd have plenty of room to grow with this system, which is always good, right? You don't want to start off maxing yourself out because then you're in real trouble. Have nowhere to find, you know, no room for <laughs> all your products. So yeah, what is your um, preferred photo method? Um, do you use your, your smartphone to capture all your, your pictures or do you, you know, do you use a standard camera like a point and shoot or a DSLR? Just curious. I have a feeling like a lot of society is like me where the smartphones are just so amazing now. They, that's all they use. But I mean, if you're, you're an avid photographer or a professional, professional photographer obviously that's a different story but for a hobbyist I think that the cell phones are probably the most popular um, camera used but I'd love to hear from you on your preferred um, preferred way to take pictures okay that one's done we're almost there and we are at holy moly 48 minutes already this is crazy I didn't think this project would take me as long as it is but I also totally underestimated how many enamel dots that I had so but I'm motivated I'm in the mood and we're just gonna get this done so I am super pumped to try out this system. So do you have any um, uh, scrappy channels you follow? I'm looking for some new content uh, just to watch. I'm just, I love discovering new, oh, I need some more to cut more new channels. So if you have any recommendations of channels you follow for like inspiration and ideas I would love to hear from you um, I always love it when I stumble upon a new one but I always like you know referrals as well my favorites right now is I really do enjoy the um, uh, crafty Jen Chow um, she has this use it or lose it series which is awesome she's you know basically goes through different kinds of product and shows you um, creative ways to use it on layout and then it helps you also identify whether or not like it's a product you'll keep or you're just like no nope, I'm not gonna buy it or use it ever again and you get rid of it so it's a really great series and she's such a talented um, scrapper she's so so talented and I've been watching a lot of Allie Edwards too because I really like her the way she documents project life um, I like her simplistic style and I think for me like I overcomplicate it um, so I'm really gonna take some some notes from the way she documents and give it a whirl because I really love it's just clean and simple and she really just focuses on the story and um, for my project life, that's kind of like where, you know, where I want to land. And I think I try too hard when I do it. And it just looks like cluttered and like there's too much going on where I'm just really want it to be clean and simple. So she's been really inspiring for me lately. She's such a talented woman. So, but yeah, if you have anybody else that you watch and 
you'd recommend. I'd love to hear. Always looking for ooh, new people to discover. All right. So we've got these green guys. I also have these like dimensional pieces that I was debating on at whether or not I might do this system for. I haven't decided. I think I might because they can't they come on the same clear backing. So it kind of makes sense to do it that same way. So I might give those a whirl too. Kind of broaden it just beyond enamel. I think that makes sense. Got some good Christmas green on there. I should have used that in my layout. That's the last sparkly one. Okay, it's less to stick. There we go. Alright, here's some random. These are more like the blue, kind of like a teal blue, but that's alright. We'll just tuck them on there so they have a home. Again, I'm just I'm going to be flipping through these, so I'm trying to get them by color, but you're going to look at them anyway, like, individually, I guess, the term I'm looking for. So it's not that big of a deal if you have some of the colors, you know, mixed in. As long as you don't have, like, well, for me, there's no rules, but my own personal rule would be I would definitely not want to mix, like, yellow and blue. Like, those need to be, like two separate cards unless they were on a whole collection if that makes any sense so I just wouldn't be able to do it <laughs> I know I know total type A with certain things anyway some things I can let go but there's just certain things I can't that's one of them I'm really digging it I'll have to show you guys the container here in a moment um, it's looking really good. Definitely my if you're struggling if you're struggling like I was with enamel dots, this definitely may be a system you want to try. It's just pretty basic, but you know that's sometimes we we tend to overthink things, right? And gotta bring it back down to basics. And I've always been a fan of like flipping through things, kind of like a library Rolodex card or, you know, maybe it's because of my age and how I grew up, but I, I like thumbing through product. It doesn't, you know, something satisfying about it. So this, this method really speaks to me. Oh, but we, we're going to get them all on there. Yay. And so I keep my enamel dots in my kits that they come with until I've, I'm done using the kits and then I transfer them over to my general organization method. Um, so I have lots more of enamel dots like hanging out in my folders where my kits are, are stored. So, but this is a really easy system to like just as you finish with it, you just grab a sheet of five by five or five and a quarter by five and a quarter sheet and you stick your enamel dots and you're done. Um, instead of trying to do it like I am right now, like an all one felt swoop. So this is a very easy to maintain um, organization method. have some more neutrals here. And I'm all about easy. I really like easy. Because if it's too complicated, I don't want to spend a ton of time looking for something or organizing something. Um, I don't want to overcomplicate it. I like to keep it simple. 
because if it feels like a chore, you're less likely to do it. And we want to spend more time creating and not organizing. I mean, I love organizing, don't get me wrong, but if I had a choice, I would much prefer being creative over organizing or tidying up. That's part of the reason why I created this 20 minute motivator series is to at the very least dedicate 20 minutes a week to tidying something up. And those 20 minutes often turn like this one to about an hour or more. But you know what? I've accomplished something. And that's the important part. Get rid of those. Ooh. Actually, I want to add these. Um, so at the very least, I'm, I'm doing something productive at least once a week. And that's all you have to do. And if you keep chipping away week by week, 20 minute chunks of time or an hour chunk of time, however long your project takes you, you're eventually going to reach that goal. Whatever that goal was, uh, you know, for example, say you, you wanted to tidy your entire craft room. And now if you just took and uh, dedicated 20 minutes a week, you could make great progress in an entire year. Now this seems so far away, right? So that's where you come in and say, okay, do I want to take an entire year to organize my craft room or do I want to get it done sooner? Well, if you want to get it done sooner, then you just bump up your, in your investment time, right? Instead of once a week, maybe I'll do three times a week or, you know, so on and so forth. You drive that timeline, but you know, at the very least, if you have something you want to get done and you're just so unmotivated to do it, 20 minutes really is a game changer. It's like the magic number. We, we spend so much time, 20 minutes of time in our day wasting on other things like TV and technology and social media, you know, um, it's kind of nice to be able to uh, in turn take that time that you would have done, you know, watching TV or scrolling through social media to do something more, a little more productive. And you know what? You could do this while watching TV. So you're multitasking. It's not like this takes a lot of brain power, you know, or brain capacity to do. So, and usually when you start, you, you know, your motivation kicks in and you're just like, oh man, I am making progress. I want to keep going. And then the next thing you know, it's an hour, <laughs> which is where we're at. Holy moly. I am so sorry, guys. This is taking so long. But if you're sticking it out with me, thank you so much. And maybe you're being productive right along with me. So thank you. But I want to see this project through. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Um, but it's just, I am a prime example of how that works, right? You start off with like, all right, I'm just going to take 20 minutes and, and you know, I'm going to, I'm going to get the small task done. And next thing you know, you're like, you know, you got the tunes cranked or your TV show on and you're just super productive. It's funny how that works. It's like magic, right? And you can apply that to anything you need to do, not just your craft room, right? It's just, uh, I, you know, the craft room is a place that we all struggle with, so. And we can all relate. We are almost there, we're in the red, and then I got a couple of colorful ones. And I have to decide on those. Dimensional flowers and such. So for those of you who follow me, um, you know that I have a couple of Facebook groups. One is called Craft Room Cleanup. And so I have done some work over there in that group and I, I've created a, um, a cleanup, step-by-step -step cleanup guide, like trying to basically break down my 
the way I organize and how I look at things. Kind of like a simple step-by-step -step process um, for organizing. And um, I have now taken it like one step further and I created, they have these like, I've created units right within the group. So if you join the group, which is called Craft Room Cleanup, um, go check it out. I encourage you, especially if you want to um, gather with like-minded people uh, where you all kind of want to have a more organized space. Again, it's geared towards your craft room, but again, um, you know, you can apply this logic to anywhere in your life that needs organizing. Um, but yeah, so I've actually gone through and created units uh, for the group. So, you know, unit one basically walks through the beginning, pro you know, beginning steps of the process. Um, and it walks you through the, you know, the whole organization process with question prompts and ideas and, um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. And so in conjunction with the, um, the units that I've developed for the, the step-by-step -step guide, um, I'll be doing some concentrated videos as well. So you have that to look forward to. Uh, in future content, really breaking down your supplies and walk, you know, kind of, we're organizing it together, basically. Because I know, like me, uh, a lot of people, one, are visual, right? And number two, you, I am like, when I see something, I am so easily influenced. I wouldn't say easily influenced, but I'm influenced by... Uh, other people and so when I see some cool idea like on YouTube um, for example or Pinterest or or Instagram I you know I'm instantly motivated to like try it I'm like oh man that's such a great idea I want to give it a whirl um, and so to have a community where you're you're getting a ton of different ideas to help motivate you to try I'm just like so excited about it um, I think we're at like a membership of somewhere around 270 or so so it's really starting to grow and and I'm just like so excited about all the content coming and just helping everybody out with their craft space it's like something I'm really passionate about because I know organization and clutter and uh, just is overwhelming for people I just I understand that and I feel like I have found a way to navigate through it and to to manage it and so I want to be able to share that because it's something that anybody can do with the right teaching and tools so if you're really passionate about wanting to organize your craft room or really any space for that matter I, I really encourage you to head on over to the um, craft room cleanup group um, check out the the step-by-step -step guide and the unit modules and just say hello and and uh, meet a lot of like-minded folks people who are struggling just like you are with organization you know make some friends and support each other I pop in there all the time to like try to give tips and motivation to help encourage you you know to remind you that you can do this it is possible um, you just gotta, you gotta have the right mindset and the right focus and don't let it overwhelm you. And, uh, yeah, I'm like super excited about 2020 and like all that I have planned for, you know, craft room organization and, you know, I'm just so very excited about it. Um, and I also have another group that's, uh, Jessica Grace and Friends Pretty Pages and so that group is just all about uh, scrapbooking, basically, and sharing our, our creations, our layouts that we make. Um, we do challenges over there as well, and I like to do sketch challenges and throw in a twist, you know, trying to push you to try different techniques and stuff like that. So that's another really fun group if, you know, because some would argue that buying and organizing is just as much of a hobby as creating, right? 
<laughs> so there are like two worlds. And uh, I tried to create groups that uh, account for them both because I myself, I love to organize, I love to buy, but I also love to create. And I also love to share my ideas and communicate with others who have the same passions as I do. So um, that's also another really fun group. Um, still in our infancy there as well, but if you're interested, I definitely encourage you to go ahead and check that out too. Um, again, no, 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 th there's just a lot of really great ladies on there and a whole bunch of different talents and they're just so inspiring. I absolutely just love it so very much. Um, such great engagement and there's a, you know, it just brightens my day whenever I see some posts come across in there. So if you haven't checked it out yet, I really encourage you to do so um because it's super fun okay we have finished enamel and look at this i haven't organized them by color yet but how phenomenal is this how easy is it to just flip through and see what you have for enamel shapes oh my gosh i'm in love i am super thrilled so i gotta i'm gonna go through and probably create some labels so I can, you know, identify where my colors are. Or, you know what, it's just, I don't know. I don't know. I think I'll do that, but I'm not sure. Um, and then I'm going to probably, I'm going to debate on those enamel shapes. But we have completed the task at hand. We've got all our enamel organized. So I'll probably, like, scoot these up to the front and put a filler back here until, you know, and then as I, you know, um, organize more we can expand the storage but thank you so much again Jess for this wonderful technique I'm like super excited about it I hope you all have enjoyed this uh, 20 minute motivator the first one of 2021 I'm so happy to be back after the holiday many more to come uh, please make sure you hit like and subscribe and that little bell notification too because I got lots of content coming down down the pipeline and I want to make sure you don't miss it and I hope you don't want to miss it so a like and a subscribe and a notification will make sure that you don't. Um, thank you all so very much and I hope you have a wonderful night. Bye!